The world of Fairy Tale has brought us a ton of characters, and with the sequel series Fairy Tale Hunter Year Quest, the roster just continues to explode as new characters and types of magic are introduced. But one stigma that still exists with Fairy Tale is that it's just your standard run of the mill battle shonen that takes fan service all the way up to extreme levels. It's that latter part regarding the fan service that gives the series a certain stigma in the broader anime community, leading to people mistakenly believing that the characters they don't have any depth or any arcs at all especially when it comes to the women if i had a dollar for every time someone said the plot of fairy tale is the power of friendship and sexy women like lucy running around half naked i'd retire on a private island that's why in today's newest anime explain video i wanted to take an in-depth look at the character of lucy hartfilia the co-main character of the story in a lot of people's eyes and explain why this notion that lucy deserves better it doesn't really need to exist because once you strip away the fan service and the gap humor that her character has been subjected to she's grown more layers to her than just increasing her battle skills that you saw in the last arc of fairy tale and throughout hundred years quest if that intro does not make it clear i am a big fan of lucy's character so there will be some bias in this but i'm gonna try to keep it to a bare minimum but i do believe that if you're skeptical about her character you're gonna walk away from this video with a greater appreciation for her lucy hartfilia from fairy tale is one of the central protagonists Agnes, known for her relatable personality, her growth, her thematic depth, and here is going to be an in-depth breakdown of her character. When we first meet Lucy in the manga, there are signs right away that it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, we see her brilliance and her knowledge of magic on display, as well as her being able to discern when magic was being used against her, but also we see that at times she can be subjected to a bit of the damsel in distress trope, needing to be rescued at times, and even with some of her celestial spirits like Aquarius, they were either unpleasant to her at times, or they made her the subject of humor like we saw with Virgo. Yet the very subtle stripping away of her character that we see early on, it was meant to be a rebuilding of someone whose past trauma had not fully allowed her to grow into the character that she is meant to be, the character that I personally love, the fully confident and capable person who is an asset that you see in Fairy Tale Hunter Your Quest as well as in the final arc of Fairy Tale. Simply put, if she doesn't experience everything from the start of the series leading up into her father's death then we don't get the lucy we have now lucy is introduced as a smart confident and independent woman with a dream of joining the fairy tale guild her intelligence and her practicality shine through in both her strategic thinking during battles as well as with her penchant for writing. She is passionate about literature as shown with her dream of becoming a novelist which gives her depth outside of the typical action oriented shonen protagonist mold as well as your typical female in a shonen that is used for fan service. Lucy's warmth and compassion or loyalty they are her most defining traits. Her determination, her resilience, and her ability to adapt they are tested frequently throughout the story but she never loses sight of her core values. She also has a playful side and she can be vain at times often concerning her appearance. She's highly empathetic and caring deeply for her friends and their well-being. This sense of care it extends to her celestial spirits that she summons as she treats them as partners rather than tools. Part of what makes Lucy so well written is that while she is a battle shown in character that is surrounded with monster characters in some cases literal monsters because they're dragons or they can transform into dragons and she's also on a team with some of the strongest wizards in the verse lucy is meant to be a look into this fantastical world through the eyes of a relatively normal person sure she is a wizard herself so she isn't technically normal she uses magic and she battles and god knows she has quirks that at times they can come off a bit bizarre but outside of the entirety of team natsu she is the one that i would argue is the most human when you look at the entire group itself lucy's development it is gradual and it is realistic which makes it go underappreciated she starts off relatively weak compared to some of her more combat oriented comrades but she grows into a strong capable mage without losing her sense of humanity what makes her stay Stand out as a well-written character is her emotional intelligence and her unwavering support of her friends. Unlike many shonen female characters who might fall into more passive roles, Lucy's determination often drives the plot forward. Lucy also represents a balance between strength and vulnerability. She has moments of insecurity and she has moments of doubt, but she pushes through them, often motivated by the bonds that she forms with others. Her character is multi-dimensional. She's not just a love interest or a 
damsel in distress, but she is an active participant in the guild's adventures and battles. However, it's because she isn't a central figure in some of these major key battles early on, even when she didn't fight, even though she didn't fight. It leads people to often downplay her and they call her useless or things of that nature, even though if it weren't for her, the literal ending of Natsu's story would have been different and she is the one who played a major role in fairy tale even surviving the last arc with Agnologia. She is a perfect example of sometimes a tree that you care for just needs a little more patience, a little bit more love, and a little bit more attention before before it can bear any real fruit. This becomes even more obvious when you compare her to other shonen female protagonists, which looking over the decades of shonen female protagonists, there are plenty of hits and misses. Some might say more misses than hits, but that's another video for another day. Compared to other female characters in shonen anime, Lucy is a more central to the narrative type female protagonist than many of her counterparts. For instance, in Naruto, a series that legend has it, I tend to know a lot about. Characters like Sakura Haruno start out on the sidelines and they struggle for relevancy at times. Often sidelines in favor of their male counterparts before, like Sakura, they come on strong in the second half of the series series and they start playing a major asset role at the very end, which at times it can feel a bit plot contrived. Lucy on the other hand is more consistently involved in Fairy Tale's main plot and has several arcs that focus on her such as the Eclipse Celestial Spirits arc that you see in the anime or the Tartarus arc in the manga. Even prior to that, Lucy shed moments in every arc where she came through pulling her weight in an increased fashion, whether it be fights or showing her brain power or putting her observation to the test. Even in the Phantom Lord arc, though she was used as both a prize and a damsel in that arc, she was still someone who directly helped move the story forward. Unlike other characters who rely mostly on brute strength, an example Mikasa from Attack on Titan, Lucy combines her wits, her strategic thinking, and her emotional intelligence in order to prevail. She also evolves into a strong combatant in her own right, but her power, it comes from just as much as her bond with the celestial spirits, as it does from her own magical abilities and physical capabilities, making her very purely distinct in a way that can't truly be measured when you look at her combat peers. More layers to her character, they start to show up when you look at some of the themes that surround her character. Friendship and bonds. Lucy is the heart of the group in a lot of ways when you think about it, representing the theme of strong, long-lasting friendships, her connection with celestial spirits, treating them as equals rather than tools, reflects this theme to its absolute core. Her relationships with others in the guild, particularly Natsu, they are rooted in trust and mutual support. Independence and self-discovery, Lucy's journey is more than just becoming stronger in the magical sense. It's also about her emotional growth and self-discovery. Coming from a wealthy but lonely background as a child, she strives to find her place in the world and build her own family through her adventures with fairy tale. Perseverance in the face of adversity, Lucy faces numerous challenges, including her complicated relationship with her father and moments she feels weak compared to others, which she should feel like that. Look at the people on her team. Despite this, she perseveres and she demonstrates that strength, it comes not just from power, but also the will to protect those that you care about. A classic example is being, look at what happens in Tartarus when the members of Team Natsu, they are gone and she has to stand on her own. For a character like Lucy, even though she is in a battle shonen, she is also in a story that relies very heavily on their relationships with others as a key component to character growth. And it is because of those relationships that things like her attempt to reassemble fairy tale they hit home so hard, especially when you consider that fairy tale has replaced the family that she lost. Natsu Dragneel, arguably Lucy's most important relationship. Her bond with Natsu, it goes beyond friendship, often hinting at romantic undertones. Natsu's fearless nature, it complements Lucy's more rational, cautious demeanor, and their trust in each other is a cornerstone to the series and it makes them the perfect yin and yang. Look at the celestial spirits. An example, Aquarius and Loki. Lucy's relationship with her spirits, it is unique. She treats them with care and respect, forming close bonds with each of them. This is especially evident in her relationship with Aquarius, a spirit that I would argue she has a more mother-daughter-like bond with, despite their constant bickering. Look at the guild members, like 
Urza, Grey, Happy, Lucy forms very close bonds with the core of Fairy Tales team. With Urza, Lucy shares a mutual respect and she looks up to her as a model of strength and leadership, which that makes complete sense. Urza is, in my opinion, one of the best well-written female characters in Shonen. With Grey, their relationship, it is more sibling-like, filled with playful teasing, but there's a lot of deep mutual care there. Her darkest moments in the series, they also go a very long way towards helping her character grow in internal strength which that is something important to take note of while she does grow with every battle not at the rate as the battle powered characters like Urza and Natsu do she does grow as much as they do when you look at their power but when you measure Lucy you have to measure her in a different way through the internal conflicts that her character has had to endure and overcome through her darkest of moments which it is harder because while you expect Natsu and Urza to overcome everything in their way physically as well as everything they mentally have to deal with an example of their darkest moments because they are portrayed in the story as being these superhumans in so many different ways Lucy is the one character that is most like you or I. She is the most down to earth. She is the most relatable. When she is down, she takes it for a few minutes and it takes her a while to recover emotionally. And there are experiences that hurt Lucy much worse than any punch or kick or blast of magic could ever do. Look at one of Lucy's darkest moments. It's during the Tartarus arc where she faces the devastating loss of Aquarius after having the members of Team Fairy Tale taken away from her. Forced to sacrifice Aquarius Key to summon the Celestial Spirit King, Lucy experiences immense emotional pain as she is forced to give up someone dear to her to protect her friends. This moment is not only a significant loss, but it is a turning point in Lucy's growth as she confronts the harsh realities of sacrifice. She learns the hard way. In order to protect those that you love, sometimes you have to give up something you love, or in this case, someone you love. Another dark moment comes when Lucy learns of her father's death. Despite their strained relationship, his death, it brings a deep sense of loss and regret forcing Lucy to come to terms with those unresolved feelings, especially when you look at how their relationship ended the last time we saw them together. Her reaction to these moments, it makes more sense when you take a look at her personality type, which comes out very closely to being very aligned with the ENFJ personality type. So let's take a look at each letter and attach it to her character so you can see why and better appreciate her character. So extroverted is what stands for E. Lucy is very people oriented as far as her character. She thrives on forming connections with those around her, particularly her guildmates and her spirits. The N stands for intuitive. Lucy is imaginative and she is forward thinking, often drinking, often dreaming of her future as a novelist. She also thinks about the bigger picture, especially in terms of friendship and the guild's safety. F stands for feeling. Lucy is led by her big heart, making decisions based on empathy and care for others. Her relationships are always central to her motivations. J stands for judging. She is organized. She is responsible and often seen writing in her journal, often seen at times writing on the book that she is working on. Lucy, she is someone who prefers structure and planning but is also capable of adapting when necessary evident by the nine million times Natsu has burst forward in her home without her even knowing it when you look at this info and then attach the loss of her family and the celestial spirits namely Aquarius everything begins to make a lot more sense to you Lucy comes from a very wealthy family but her childhood is marked by emotional isolation her mother Layla Hartfilia she passed away when Lucy was still young, which left her alone with her emotionally distraught and often very distant and controlling father, Jude Harfilia. Jude was consumed by his work and largely ignored Lucy's emotional needs, treating her more like a tool to further the family's influence rather than treating her like a daughter, which is something she needed at the time. This early loss of her mother and the emotional neglect from her father instilled in Lucy a deep sense of yearning for familial love and genuine connection, something that she never felt she received at home. Eventually, Lucy left her home, determined to find her own path and freedom. This sense of abandonment by her father and the pain of losing her mother drove her more to seek out a new family elsewhere, which eventually led her to Natsu, who led her to Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale represents the antithesis of her childhood loneliness. It's a chaotic and warm and in a tight-knit guild that prioritizes bonds between members over wealth and status. Lucy's attachment 
to a fairy tale, it stems from the fact that it's the first place where she ever truly felt she belonged, where she's not treated as a means to an end, but as someone who is valued for who she is. The Gill fills the emotional void left by her family, becoming her new home and her new source of strength. The same is true for Natsu, which is why when he left without saying anything to her, she was so crushed, because to her, he is the person that she most associated fairy tale with, Natsu. Not even from a romantic perspective. That's irrelevant to this video, whether or not she has feelings for him, which I think that she does, and it broken down in another video here on the channel, but her attachment to Natsu holds so strongly because of her personality type and the way that he has directly pushed her to become a better person even without him realizing it. Natsu dragged Neil for Lucy as a source of emotional security. Lucy's relationship with Natsu, it is key to her overcoming feelings of abandonment and loneliness. From the moment they meet, Natsu offers Lucy a kind of unconditional friendship that she has never had before. Natsu's carefree, adventurous, and deeply loyal nature, it provides Lucy with extreme emotional security, and it provides her the best opportunity to grow. The trust and support with Natsu, it is something very huge. Natsu is constantly there for Lucy, even when she feels inadequate or she feels afraid. His support reassures her that she isn't alone. While Lucy might initially view Natsu's recklessness as being overwhelming over time, it becomes clear that his fearless personality is what enables her to open up and take risks that she might have avoided because of her more sheltered life she had growing up. The fear of losing Natsu is also huge. Natsu's deep bond with Lucy's deep bond with Natsu becomes so profound that she fears losing him paralleling her fear of abandonment and everything that she experienced with her father. In several instances, we see Lucy cling to Natsu both physically after a battle like you might have saw with the Dragon God by now in the anime, where it became clear she might lose Natsu, and emotionally, we see Lucy cling to him as an anchor, and her biggest fear is being left behind once more. Natsu, however, consistently reassures her throughout the entirety of the series with his unwavering presence, and that is something that over time serves to alleviate a lot of Lucy's fears. Aquarius, on the other hand, represents a more complex maternal bond, something that is worth its own video that I'll end up discussing hopefully before the end of Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest Season 1. If not, we'll talk about that in Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest Season 2 when it's more appropriate. So Aquarius is one of Lucy's celestial spirits. She represents a complex and multifaceted relationship in Lucy's life. Initially, Aquarius, she seems abrasive, often berating and teasing Lucy in a way that suggests she doesn't really care for her. However, beneath this harsh exterior, lies a deep, almost maternal connection that mirrors a mother-daughter relationship. Aquarius as a mother figure, it is written right there in the story very subtly. Lucy's bond with Aquarius, it can be seen as a surrogate for the maternal connection that she lost when her mother died. Even though Aquarius constantly chastises Lucy, there is a there is a sense of tough love and protection hidden behind all of that. Aquarius has a long history with the Hartfilia family and has been very present in Lucy's life since childhood, which adds layers to their relationship. Lucy may have subconsciously looked to Aquarius for guidance and emotional support that she once received from her mother, despite Aquarius's harsh demeanor. The sacrifice of Aquarius is something that hits harder when you take this into account. One of the darkest moments in her life was when she had to do that. This is devastating to Lucy because she's not only losing a powerful ally in battle, she's losing someone who has been, I would argue, the constant presence in her life. It's not just the act of losing Aquarius that hurts Lucy, but the fact that it represents another sense of abandonment, this time by someone that she cared deeply about, even if their relationship was sometimes strained. The death of Aquarius and Lucy's fear of abandonment are would also add more layers to the character. Lucy's fear of abandonment, it is rooted in her past, and the loss of Aquarius, it heightens his fear. Having already lost her mother and feeling emotionally abandoned by her father, Aquarius's departure leaves Lucy with the burden of yet another loss. Lucy's relationship with Aquarius was complicated but meaningful, and the sudden irreversible separation, it triggers feelings of guilt, grief, and loneliness. Reliving the loss is something that you have to look at thematically when it comes to the scene. The loss of Aquarius, it can also be seen as a metaphorical reliving of Lucy's earlier trauma of having lost her mother. 
just as Layla died when Lucy was young, leaving her alone to navigate her emotions, Aquarius's departure, it forces Lucy to confront the fear that everyone that she loves will leave her in the end. It is a unfortunate, harsh reality about life. We love people and the people we love, they will eventually end up leaving us as they grow older or as life happens. It reignites that sense of helplessness and loneliness that plagued her childhood. However, Aquarius is also there to serve as a emotional growth for her. The sacrifice also marks a turning point in Lucy's emotional development. In the aftermath, she realizes she has to accept loss as a part of life and learn to rely on herself more. Aquarius's departure teaches Lucy the painful lesson that she can't cling to people forever. While this deepens her fear of abandonment, it also strengthens her resolve to fight for those who remain. It's a moment of emotional maturation where Lucy steps out of her comfort zone and takes responsibility for painful decisions. The losses that Lucy experiences throughout her life, particularly the loss of her mother and later Aquarius, they play a fundamental role in shaping her fear of abandonment and her strong attachment to fairy tale and her celestial spirits. Also, we can eventually see her rise above that. Lucy's bond with Natsu, it is especially important in helping her heal from these emotional wounds as she is often seen with him and he provides a continuous, consistent form of emotional security that her character needs and longs for. It thrives off of. However, her deepest fear remains losing those that she cares for and she struggles with it at times. And the death of Aquarius, it forced her to confront that fear directly. Despite the pain, all these experiences with Lucy, they ultimately help her grow emotionally, becoming stronger in both her personal relationships and her magical abilities, which is precisely why I strongly believe she is one of the better women in Shonen when you look at how she's written, which that might be a hot take, but it's one I am very willing to stand on because even when you look past the plot and you look more at the human aspect of her character, I think she's extremely well written. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and checking out more content from Anime Explained, or if you're into Naruto, check out my Naruto Explained channel.